Okay, uh, third portion of the exam. This is the rhetorical analysis portion. This is a copy of the text that I included on the review sheet. So let me take a moment to explain this. And remember, interrupt me and ask questions at any time that you'd like. And then let's review some concepts and uh, plan how you would approach this portion of the exam. I will give you a rhetorical claim, one of the three, pathos, logos, or ethos. So you will see one of these words on the exam. You must be prepared to deal with any one of these three. And I will give you a literary device. For instance, loaded language, which some of you dealt with uh, profanity, racist terminology in Friday Night Lights, statistical evidence. Some of you dealt with imagery, um, characterization. Our list of literary devices is, is rather long, but I'm not going to give you something that is really obscure. So if I give you characterization, you should know what that is and how to write about it. If I give you imagery, you should know what that is and how to write about it, statistical evidence, and so on. So you'll see one of these words, pathos, logos, and ethos, and then you'll see a literary device. And then I'll say, use those two to say something analytical about Friday Night Lights. And then you write your paragraph. The paragraph must include a claim, and then two Examples conclusion. I'd say claim is one sentence, two examples, probably two sentences per example. You're talking about four there. About a six sentence paragraph. That would be efficient and should be relatively easy. So that'll be your task. Initial questions about that. Oh, and you may use your copy of Friday Night Lights. Um, I have not required quotation support, but with some of these claims, you want to use it. So if you're dealing with voted language, and you want to talk about the language you, being used, you, you need to quote. If you're talking about statistical evidence, um, you may not need to quote directly. So take a look at the device and determine whether or not you want to quote something. And make sure that uh, you have a copy of Friday Night Lights. Could you earn some points and do fairly decently on this without a copy of Friday Night Lights? Sure. But in some cases, you'll find yourself challenged to fully answer the question. OK, so once again, a pause on that. Questions about the task. All right, then let's do the uh, review. Um, let's start with the uh, rhetorical claims themselves. Uh, Let's see. Taha, pick one. Logos, pathos, ethos. Pathos. Okay, talk to me about what you remember with pathos, Taha. How he makes him Oh, no, hold on. You're, you're jumping ahead. Just generally, what is pathos? Right. So, Taha, you're already two steps ahead. Let's uh, roll it back a little bit makes reader feel emotion. When we're dealing with a pathos claim, you're talking about how Bissinger tries to make me feel something. So if I give you pathos on the exam, I expect you to write a paragraph about how Bissinger is making me feel something. And that means that I expect to see emotion terms. Um, good, you gave me one, sympathy. Taha wants to talk about how Bissinger develops sympathy. Could you give me other emotions that you remember Bissinger developing besides sympathy? Uh, let's use a different word than happy. So joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. If I'm at a football game and uh, there you go, I like the excitement. We definitely feel the excitement of a football game probably through his imagery. Can you give me something else? Yeah, frustration, definitely. What is important to realize, not the characters feeling this, it's not Bissinger feeling it, it's how he makes you feel about this. That's the pathos analysis. Um, Taha, you were already on to a claim. What do you want to deal with? What's your claim? He's making me feel sympathy toward whom? Winchell. Mike Winchell. And how is he doing that? Describing his last name in the hospital. 
Okay. What is that? Uh-huh. If I had to say that this is a literary device, what literary device might it be? Hmm. Because I'll tell you what, I'm not, I will not on the exam give you Winchell and the Death of His Father. I'll give you a literary device, and you must determine that it is Winchell and the Death of His Father if you wish. Lindsay? It could be imagery. It could be imagery. And Lindsay, do you remember um, imagery of Winchell and the death of his father? What do you remember seeing in your mind's eye? And him running out of the room. And yeah, okay, good. Exactly. It could be imagery. So if I gave you imagery connected to pathos, you could pursue Tahas. You could say that, oh, in fact, I'm not going to say this. I'm going to type it. Here's your claim. Dreaming of Heroes, Bissinger developed sympathy for Mike Winchell through imagery of his father's death. That's it. So what have you what have you had on the exam? I just gave you this and this. Can anybody recall dealing with imagery and emotion, imagery and pathos and Friday Night Lights with a totally different claim, different idea? Nate. Do you remember imagery making you feel anything? What about like the uh, dramatic football scenes? Excellent. So imagery of the football scenes generate excitement. Good. Um, Yusuf. Well, I was like, I remember in some like in the state championship, uh -huh. how like it was fourth down, and then they said like the ball clearly hit the ground, and you feel frustrated. After that. Good. Imagery of the football game developing frustration. Okay. Okay. Imagery of, of Don creating maybe sympathy for him or frustration toward him, one or the other, depending on where you want to go. I will not tell you where to go with this. I will not tell you which chapter to focus on. Do you want to focus on multiple chapters? Sure. In that case, your claim should be in Friday Night Lights, Bissinger does something. Do you want to focus on one chapter? That's fine. You determine that. I just give you these. So my assessment is to see whether or not you can write a claim, Develop a paragraph, understand this, understand this, and understand Friday Night Lights. So actually, in that little paragraph, I've just assessed a lot. But it should be pretty straightforward, and some of it might just come back from memory of something that you already did. Reem, did you have a question? No, just the book. Now, if you've written some little notes in your book, that's fine. But if I look in your book and find out that there are whole sheets of notes copied into the cover, then I'll have to remove your book. So don't abuse an open book privilege. What do you notice is not present in this claim? The word pathos. In your claims, you do not use the word pathos. Instead, what will I see in every pathos claim? How will I know it's a pathos claim? I'll see the emotion. I'll see an emotion word. Or I'll see a verb like feel. OK, let's jump ahead to logos. I will not see the word logos in the claim. What will I see instead? Uh, not necessarily. You might use statistics, but what will I all, what kind of words will I always see in a logos claim? Proof. Proof. What else? What would be closely synonymous? 
possibly, but um, prove would, we don't know which type of evidence he might use to prove it. I uh, probably wouldn't use logic, even though it's a more comfortable term, Rachel, certainly. But I probably wouldn't find myself using it in there. I would use, instead of logic, something that implies logic, which is argue. Prove, argue, explain. I should see those words within a logos claim. Which word should I see in an ethos claim? Or words would be common. Credibility and reliability. Uh, something having to do with identity. I will not see these words. I want to see a common student mistake that I read it and immediately know that the entire paragraph is flawed. Bissinger uses logos. No, he doesn't. Logos is not a literary device. Logos is a category of ideas. Uses pathos. He doesn't use pathos. He develops emotion in a reader or tries to provoke emotion in a reader, sure. But don't use those terms. Why do we use them? Because they're categories. We use category terms, but this should be specific. All right, um, let me provide some little drills on this then. Logos and Your device is anecdote, and an anecdote is a short story. And by short, I mean anywhere from a few sentences to a paragraph, that sort of short story, like little example stories. OK, so you've got logos and you've got anecdote. Can anybody try to, you don't even have to write the claim. Just work it through with me. What, what do you remember, Lindsay? Uh, give me a specific story of Odessa, though. OK, good. Um, the, the man who murdered the Chinese person, right? The, um, Lindsay, and hold on, I see, I see the hands. Lindsay, what do you think it's, he's using that to prove or explain? Specify messed up. Messed up in what way? Come on, it's, it's right in front of your face. Unjust how? He was killed. He was Chinese. They said it, yes, they said it didn't matter because he was Chinese. Can you show me another anecdote which also demonstrates the racism of Odessa? No? Uh, I need a specific anecdote, though, a specific story of an event. The racist term toward him, but once again, we need a specific story at a specific point, you know. Good. There we go. using the n-word to insult him during the game. So you go from these two pieces of information that I've given you, you think about a story. Oh, I remember the story of that Chinese man that was murdered. Now, what is he using that to do? Why did he put that on the page? I think he put that on the page to show the injustice and racism of Odessa. Where else did he do that? And we also did that with um, the insulting of Booby Miles during the game. I've got my paragraph. And since this spreads, I believe, over more than one chapter, my domain is the novel itself.
That's it. I had an open book in front of me, I could probably crank one of these out in about five minutes. It shouldn't take you all that much longer. You have the same material that I have right now. You just take a little bit more time in processing and writing it. But all I do is follow a formula. What's my formula? I write my claim according to formula. Then I intro my evidence and I give it. I make a transition, something as simple as also. I intro my evidence, then I give it. And then I conclude. For instance, Bissinger tells the story of an unjustly murdered um, Chinese man. He says that, and then you summarize quickly. Also, he tells the story of Booby Miles being insulted with racist terminology during a game. The other boys called him, and then quotation and citation. These examples and others throughout, and so on. That's it. Yes. I don't want you using an example is. You remember the difference? An example is leads to the weak verb is. If you use for example, that's good because then you can write for example, Bissinger develops or Bissinger tells. And then you've got active subject and active verb. For example and for instance work well. Use them, please. An example is or another example is leads to weak verb choice. So stay away from those. Yep. Make sense? This is step by step what I think the, uh, the thought process is. So you read your device. Device being the um, like uh, anecdote, right? We just read the anecdote, and and remember one. So Lindsay remembered the anecdote of the murdered Chinese man. Okay, so she's read this, and she found an example, and then she can find another example of a little story. Actually, I'm going to change this just a little bit. Come on. Sorry, that's a little bit, that's more accurate to how we just did it. So read the device and consider um, when you remember using it. Oh, thanks. So consider when you remember Bissinger using it. We just did that with the, the murdered Chinese man. Um, let me try this again. I've just given you logos. No? 
I'm going to give you ethos, and I'll give you authoritative evidence. Evidence from authority, from recognized authorities. And what, who reported that? Do you remember? I think that was a news, uh, that was a Nightline example. So major news source reports the stats and discusses the stats, okay? Authoritative evidence, excellent. So I've given you ethos, given you the authoritative evidence. Kareem, what does it do? Remember, you're in the land of ethos now. He puts down authoritative evidence on the page. What does it do for him as an author? Very good. Makes him seem credible. Now, number four, can you find another piece of authoritative evidence that makes him seem credible? Or else does he present some research that seems to have authority? Yeah, you said. Excellent. So some SAT scores. SAT uh, carries with it an uh, authoritative measure of students' academic work. I could see that being used. You've got your second, right, your four-part claim. In Friday Night Lights, Bissinger cites authoritative evidence to increase his credibility as an author. For instance, Nightline and the stats. Also, SAT in the example, conclude you're done. Questions about that process? I'm passing out three by five note cards. I'd like you to take one of these. Write your name on it, please. After writing your name on it, write these nine steps and nothing more. Once you've written those nine steps, you will give this back to me, and I'll give it back to you during the exam. Yeah. Today. 